It's the Roy Rogers Show. Happy trails to you. It's nice to meet again. Happy trails to you. Until the journey's end. Oh, Sugar Crisp, the cereal treat that's fun to eat, brings you the Roy Rogers Show, transcribed on the Double R Bar Ranch, with Pat Brady and the Queen of the West, Dale Evans. Happy trails to you, time to ride again. And here he is, in person, the king of the cowboys, Roy Rogers. Well, howdy, folks. Now, before we go on, remember, Post Sugar Crisp is that swell-tasting cereal treat you can eat three ways. And talking about Sugar Crisp boys and girls, here's great news. Now you can get wonderful hand puppets of Handy, Dandy, and Candy, the Sugar Crisp Bears, and a genuine puppet theater all for yourself. So get pencil and paper ready right now, because you'll want to write down the details later on. There is a caller at the Double R Bar Ranch, Cochera, young chief of the Apache tribe, whose reservation extends across the northern end of Paradise Valley. Cochera has come to seek the counsel of his respected friend, Roy Rogers. Well, I wouldn't do it, Cochera. I think what you charged Mr. Wheeler for the use of the grazing land was perfectly fair. I certainly would not graze as many head as I told him. Why, that's silly, Cochera. I know that pasture land, and there ain't a rich or 5,000 acres anywhere in the valley. Wheeler knew what he was getting when he made the original lease. He's a pretty sharp businessman, you know. Shall I talk to him? My thanks, Nantan Rogers. But Cochera's people prefer not to have white man's help in tribal affairs. I understand. Why, shucks, at the price Wheeler's offering, you'd do better if you'd buy more stock and use that land yourselves. I do not wish to rush my tribesmen in this cattle-raising project, friend Pat. This is a new thing for the Apaches. You're right there, Cachera. When are you seeing Mr. Wheeler again? I will ride to meet with him tomorrow. Perhaps he will make more clear his complaint about the land. Well, you know yourself that it's good grazing, don't you? It was. But he does not permit me or my tribesmen to come near it now. Why, that's silly. The terms of the lease state that he shall have full control. But I am deeply hurt at what he accuses my people of doing. What's this, Cachera? Nantan Rogers... Mr. Wheeler claims that the Apaches turn sheep loose at night to graze on the least pasture. What? Sheep? (laughs) That's a laugh. I guess Wheeler don't know how much trouble you had talking your people into raising a few head of cattle, let alone sheep. Wheeler certainly doesn't know Apache history, does he? In the old days, the Apaches' deepest scorn was for the Navajo tribe. We were warriors. They were sheep herders. Well, if I were you, Kachar, I'd certainly call him on that sheep story, and I'd certainly inspect the land thoroughly before I even thought about reducing the price for next year's lease. Thank you, Nantan Rogers. It is good to hear those words from you. My people respect your counsel. Why, shucks, any time you want my advice, why, me and Roy's glad to give it to you. Thank you, friend Pat. I ride back to my village now. Come, Fleet Gold. Hey, that fleet gold's getting to be quite a horse, isn't he? He is Cochera's most prized possession. Doubly prized because he is the gift of Nantan Rogers. Boy, he sure is a spitting image of his daddy. Don't that horse favor Trigger, though, Roy? (laughs) He sure does. Of course, I don't think he'll ever be the horse Trigger is. You are prejudiced, my friend. To me, fleet gold is the finest horse in the world. Well, good luck, Cochera. If you need any help, you know where to come. Again, my thanks. May peace and health and happiness be with you. Go, Fleet Gold. So long, Cachera. Man, Roy, he's some horseman. Why, he just sort of leaped onto that horse's back like his legs was springs. Look at him go. And he don't even use a saddle. Cachera's not only quite a horseman, he's quite a fella, too. If all people were as clean and honest and intelligent as Cachera, it would be a better world. Well, come on, we've got some chores to do. The Raiden 
party was led by Kochara himself. My foreman recognized him. Mr. Wheeler, I think you're mistaken. Kochara came to see me three days ago. And if any of his braves had the slightest intention of raiding your herd, he would have told me. Why, Kachara and Roy have been friends for years, Mr. Wheeler. And you know yourself, there isn't a more peaceful person in Paradise Valley. Well, maybe he's got you folks fooled, but I don't think there's such a thing as a peaceful Indian. In fact, I've had about enough of all Indians. I don't know why the government coddles them like they do, giving them valuable land that we whites could put to better use. I don't know if we could put it to much better use or not. Kachara's got his tribe started in a mighty successful cattle business, and you're getting a pretty good deal yourself on that land you lease off him. Well, maybe it would be a good deal if the Indians had let me alone, but they don't. They turn their lousy sheep loose nights, and now they steal my stock and scare my hands after that. I tell you, Rogers, those Apaches are getting out of hand. They're planning trouble for the whole valley. Well, I think everything you've said since you came in here is just nonsense. Well, you may think it's nonsense, but I'm not going to let my men be massacred. I came into town today to stock up on rifles and ammunition. Those Indians are sore because I wouldn't renew my lease at their outrageous terms. If they try to get revenge, I'll be ready for them. Why, that's the silliest thing I ever heard. You know darn well if the Indians caused any trouble, they'd lose their whole reservation. I don't know anything about that, but I know that no redskin's going to make a fool out of me. Here, goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye and good riddance. I certainly hope he doesn't push the Apaches too far. The chair wouldn't pay any attention to a blowhard like Wheeler. But some of those young tribesmen might get pretty riled up if they heard the way he was talking. Well, his lease only has a few days to run. If he doesn't want to renew, he'll just have to move his cattle off the Indian land, and that'll be the end of that. Well, the trouble is he hasn't got any place to move them. He's running a couple thousand head there, and his spread sure won't hold that many more. Say, Pat, Couture didn't want us at his last meeting with Wheeler, but I think he'd be glad to tell us what happened. You mean we ought to go out to the reservation? Right. And I bet if you talked real nice, Dale would give you the day off. Well, I'll bet if you talked real nice, I'd just close up the cafe and take the day off myself. Well, there's nothing I'd rather do than ride out to the reservation. Good. Two sons ago, Kuchera rode away to see Nantan Wheeler. He has not returned, Nantan Rogers. Oh, well, that's strange. Well, you don't have to worry. If anyone can take care of himself in this country, Kuchera can. Maybe he's spending some time with the men who take care of your cattle. Lalo returned today from our herd. Speak your knowledge of our chief, Lalo. Kuchera greeted us on his way to powwow with Wheeler. He did not come back. Lalo, your braves haven't been near Wheeler's herd, have they? Kachara warned us as he passed through that we must not give Wheeler reason for suspicion or fear. But the young braves will not wait for many more sons. Well, Wheeler's accusing your men of raiding. In fact, he says the party was led by Kachara himself. Mm, That word has reached us. My people are much disturbed. Well, I think they should be. Yeah, that's even worse than that sheep dealer accusing you of. Wheeler has paid for the use of pasture land for 12 moons. When that time is over, he must leave that land or we will drive him off. Oh, Kachara will have things straightened out by that time. That's right, Lalo. You better take it easy till we hear from Kachara. If Kachara does not return, or if Wheeler and his men spread more lies, the young braves will take matters into their own hands. I will lead them myself. Lalo, Dale and Pat and I will ride the Wheeler spread to see what we can find out. Remember, if you start trouble, you could lose your homes. to Roy in a jiffy. First, here's exciting news. Now you can put on your own puppet shows in a colorful puppet theater. You can get lifelike hand puppets of Handy Dandy and Candy, the three sugar crisp bears. Imagine, these puppets are beautifully made, each with its own name printed across the chest. Put your hand inside and their heads, arms, and feet move. They act exactly as you want. They're in costume, too. Handy is a Mr. Fix-It. He's got a fasten-on hat, a carpenter's apron, and a real hammer. Dandy's the well-dressed man with bowler hat, walking cane, fancy vest. Sister Candy has a feathered beret, shopping bag, and housewife's apron. Here's how to get them. You can get any one puppet you choose, Handy, Dandy, or Candy, for only 35 cents plus one sugar crisp box top. And name the puppet you want so you'll get the right one. Or better yet, for one dollar... 
and three Sugar Crisp box tops, you get all three puppets, plus a brilliantly colored Sugar Crisp theater for staging plays, plus extra hats and musical instruments. All this for one dollar and three Sugar Crisp box tops. So send money in box tops to Sugar Crisp, Box 8669, Chicago 77, Illinois. Send for your puppets today. Chief Cochera leases part of the rich grazing lands on the Apache Reservation to rancher Rob Wheeler. Wheeler tries to renew the lease at a much lower rate, claiming that the Indians raid his herds and spoil the land by running sheep on it. Cochera fails to return from a meeting with Wheeler, and the young braves mutter of revenge for Wheeler's lies. Roy, Dale, and Pat hurry to find Wheeler and try to avoid trouble. All right, let them attack us. I've got 15 armed men. We can barricade ourselves behind the ranch wagons and show the Apaches who's boss. Bloodshed's one thing we don't want, Mr. Wheeler. There will be lives lost on both sides and no one would win. Why, you can see for yourself that there have been sheep grazing on this land. Grass is eaten right down to the dust. Well, it is in a few places, all right. But you know yourself that the Apaches don't raise sheep. That's their story. I'm through coddling those redskins. Hey, look. Cattle being driven this way. Yeah. 20 or 30 head of them. Hmm. Uh. Oh, maybe that's Milligan coming back. Milligan? Yeah, I'm a foreman. I sent him out to get the cattle the Apaches stole from us. Ah, oh, there. There he sees us. He's riding in ahead of the herd. Well, that could cause trouble, Mr. Wheeler. If you're so sure the Apaches stole your cattle, you should have called in the law. The law's too slow. I handle my own affairs. If you get those Apaches mad, your affairs are liable to be mighty tough to handle. I didn't ask you to come here, Rogers. I didn't ask for your advice. Whoa, whoa, Big Nick. Everything's fine, Mr. Wheeler. We got him back. Well, hi there, folks. Hello. Oh, howdy. Eh, Rogers here wouldn't believe that the Apaches raided our herd the other night, Milligan. Maybe this will convince him. Maybe, and maybe not. Look, Rogers, we saw them redskins sneak in here and steal cattle. Their chief was leading them. Yeah, it's funny you see them steal your cattle, but you don't see them run their sheep on and off this range. Oh, we just happened to be around the last time. Sure, and Milligan was smart. Instead of starting the fight right then and there, he just let him get away with it and went out today and took him back. Eh, uh, Indians didn't see you, did they, Milligan? Nah, I had two of the boys ride off into the hills firing pistols. While the Indians were chasing them, me and the rest of the boys cut out our own stock from their herd and came home. Good work, Milligan. I think it was pretty bad work. What do you mean, Rogers? You can see the brands on those steers. They're mine. Some of them are, but there are some with Apache brands, too. So what? Maybe we did get a few of theirs, too. They'll never miss them. I doubt if Indians can count. Oh, they can count, all right. And if you aren't careful, they'll be counting scalps. Roy, this could cause all kinds of trouble. I know, Dale. Look, Wheeler, we're going to ride back to the Apache village and try to stall for time until we find Cachero. Meanwhile, you better return those Apache cattle. Yeah, that is if you dare. If you don't, at least cut them out from your herd and drive them back close to the boundary. When we want your advice, we'll ask for it. Yeah, sure. All right. You may want to get into trouble, but I want to prevent it. Come on, Dale, Pat. All right. If you find Kachara, I'll try once more to settle this thing with him. Come on, Buttermilk. Get up, Nellie Bell. Uh, I mean, Dave. Roy, you know it's a long ride back to the reservation. Uh, what if the Indians who are with the herd just decide to take matters in their own hands? They won't do that without going back to the village first. I just hope we can get there in time to prevent trouble. Well, I'm riding back to the Indian village alone. As soon as we get out of sight of Wheeler's men, you and Pat cut off to the left and ride into those rocks that overlook the range. Well, for God's sakes, why, Roy? Well, someone had better keep an eye on Wheeler and his men. There's more going on here than we know about. <laughs> see what good it's going to do us to set up here on the rocks. Well, if the Indians do attack, we'll certainly have a grandstand seat, which is the last thing I want. Nah. Pat, wait. Whoa, Buttermilk. Oh, Dave. That sounded like a lamb. Nah. Yeah, sure did. Hey, there's a little feller lying right over there. Nah. Oh, he looks lost. Yeah, probably wandered off from the rest of the flock. Rest of the flock? What would a flock of sheep be doing up in these rocks? Yeah, nah. that's just what I was wondering. Let's go look. Yeah, sure ain't none down there with the cattle. 
Hey, Dale, I hear more of them. Hmm. Right for that rise. Come on, Dave. Get up, Buttermilk. Pat, these rocks divide the Indian reservation from a little valley on the other side. Do you know who owns that valley? Valley on the other side? Oh, why, sure, that's Wheeler's property. Oh, here we are. Look down there, Pat. A flock of about 50 sheep in a pen. Yeah, they must be Wheeler's sheep. They're on his spread. Don't you get it, Pat? Wheeler's been driving his own sheep onto the land he's leased from the Indians. There aren't enough of them to do any real damage, but you can tell they've been there, and he's blaming the whole thing onto the Indians. Hey, that's right, Dale. Why, he's cheating them Apaches. You know, I wouldn't be surprised but what he's figuring some way to steal that leased land away from them. Yeah. I've already figured the way, Brady. Get oh. those hands up. Get off those horses. Now, yeah. take that guns, boss. Might come in handy against the redskins. Right. Now get back there, Milligan. You're in charge. I'll take care of things, too. Don't worry about a thing, Mr. Wheeler. This place seems to be pretty popular with snoopers. I caught one here two days ago, and I think maybe you might know him. Kachara. Exactly. So that's why Kachara didn't come back to the tribe. Look, Wheeler, if Kachara's tribe doesn't hear from him, there's going to be trouble. And they're going on the warpath against you. Not against me. Against my men. What? You mean you'd let your ranch hands be shot down? They don't matter. They'll get a few Indians in the process. And once the Indians start a war, it'll be just a matter of notifying the government, and they'll be thrown off their land. Why, you're deliberately provoking them. Why, certainly. And the three of us will have a fine view of the proceedings. I'm taking you to a place where we'll be perfectly safe while the battle's going on. After that, you can join Kacharo in my dungeon. <laughs> Back to Roy in a minute, but don't forget those Sugar Crisp puppets. For 35 cents and one Sugar Crisp box top, get either handy, dandy, or candy. Or all three puppets plus theater for only one dollar and three box tops. Send money in box tops to Sugar Crisp, Box 8669, Chicago 77, Illinois. And remember, as a cereal, it's dandy. For snacks, it's so handy. Or eat it like candy. Post Sugar Crisp. Rancher Rob Wheeler captures Dale and Pat and forces them to a rocky crevice overlooking a plain where, as in the early days of the West, Apaches and white man may soon be locked in combat. And back at the Indian village, Roy hears the news he has dreaded. Lalo has led a party of braves against Wheeler's men. Wheeler lies and cheats and steals. No word from Kachera? If he has met with foul play, Lalo and the Braves will avenge that too. All right, Trigger. You and I have got to get back to the grazing lands fast before the war party does. I'm going to take the saddle off. That'll make it a little easier on you. Nan Tan Rogers, you do not blame Apache for defending his honor, do you? No, I don't, Natanka. But if there's a way to satisfy your honor without bloodshed, I've got to find it. Natanka, oh. I'm going to leave this saddle here in Kachera's wiki up. And I'm going to borrow something of his. What belongs to Kuchara belongs to his white friend. Good. This won't take long, Trigger. And then you've got to run as you've never run before. Sit back and enjoy yourselves. If you try anything, this rifle will cut you down in a hurry. Pat, look, the Apaches, they've left their horses and they're crawling up through the grass. Well, they'll have a better chance that way than trying to charge the place where Wheeler's men are holed up. Oh, no one will have a chance this way. It'll be a massacre. This is what I've had in mind for a long time. When the Apaches are thrown off the reservation for being murderers, I'll pick up that land for a song. The Apaches murderers? You're the murderer, Wheeler. You're sending your own men to certain death. Either my boys or the Redskins will open fire any second now. They aren't in more than a hundred yards from each other. Pat, look! Coming up on horseback. By golly, that Palomino looks like Trigger. What an Indian's riding him. An Indian in full war dress. He's galloping right between the Indians and Wheeler's men. It's Kachara. How could he get out of the dungeon? Kachara? But he has. And he found the place where I had his horse hidden. Look, Kachara's stopping. He's holding up his hand. Wow, in the nick of time. Oh, the Indians won't fight now. Why don't Milligan and the men shoot him down? Look, mister, there's something about that man that would stop anyone from shooting. Yeah? Well, it won't stop me. I've got a telescopic sight on here. When I get a bead on him... I... Oh, no, you don't. Pat, you did it. His shot went into the air. Yeah, I'll take that rifle, fella, and I'll throw it down the incline. Brady, you fool. 
Coach Charlie's seen the puff of smoke from the rifle. Look, Pat, he has. He's galloping toward us. Yeah, and he's motioning the redskins to follow him. Hey, we got to get out of here. We're unarmed. And if Cochera catches me... Yeah, how you gonna get out? You've either gotta go straight down to meet Cochera or melt through these rocks some way. The dungeon, the dungeon. If I can just get down there in time. Yeah, you're staying right here, Wheeler. At least you only have to face Cochera. His braves can't get up here on foot for a couple of minutes yet. Hey, Cochera! Cochera, don't touch me. I'll confess everything. I stole your cattle. I, I put my own sheep in the range and accused you of it. I'll confess it all. Just don't, don't touch me. That's all I wanted to hear, Wheeler. And I suspected it all the time. And now we've got witnesses. Roy! Roy! That engine get up. You, you're Royal Rogers. Of course I am. But it's Cochera's horse and Cochera's wall trappings. And you've got one question to answer. Where's Cochera? He's... Roy, Wheeler's thrown Cochera in a place he calls the dungeon. All right, where is it? Quick. Those braves will work their way up here in a minute. And when they find out who I am, I'll never be able to stop them again. Cochera's the only one that can do that. All right, Rogers, you win. Cochera's still in the dungeon. It's right this way. Follow me. You bet we'll follow you. All right. Where's the dungeon? This is nothing but a rock wall. Here, help me push here. This Parker's a panel. Slides back. <gasps> a hole going down into nowhere. Watch Wheeler, Pat. Cochera, it's Roy Rogers. Can you hear me? Benton Rogers, you have come. A rope's coming down, Cochera. Are you still strong enough to pull yourself up? I will climb it, Nankin Rogers. Wheeler, it's lucky for you, Cachero's the man he is. If we'd had to go down and get him, it might have been too late. What is that I hear, Roy? It's your braves, Cachero. I stopped them from attacking Wheeler's men, but maybe we ought to turn them loose on Wheeler. No, no! I'm coming. Oh, the daylight again. Nankin Rogers, you wear Cachero's war regalia. I borrowed it, my friend. It was the only way to avoid bloodshed. Don't touch me, Cochera. Don't. Wheeler's confessed everything, Cochera. Maybe you'd better stop your warriors before it's too late. Apache Braves, Cochera commands you to halt. Why are you here? Come forward and speak, Lalo. Chief, for three sons, we did not see you. Lalo feared for your safety. And when white men raided our herd, I myself led Braves to seek vengeance. Vengeance must not be too hasty, my people. Nantan Rogers has today saved us from the consequences of vengeance. It was Nantan Rogers who rode between our braves and Wheeler's men? Yes, it was, Lalo. I guess it was lucky that you didn't recognize me or Trigger before we found a reason to head up here to the rocks. We were lucky all around, except for Wheeler. Wheeler did not give me a chance. I came to him in peace. He asked for war. Yeah, he sure don't want it now. Did you ever see such a coward? Cowardice always shows itself when the chips are down. I think it's up to you to decide what to do with him, Cachero. We Apaches wish always to live as brothers to our white friends. Let us take Wheeler to where the laws are enforced. Let his judges be not white men nor red men, but Americans. Before we close, remember that Post Sugar Crisp is the cereal treat that's fun to eat three ways. And boys and girls, don't forget to send away for handy, dandy, and candy the wonderful Sugar Crisp puppets we've told you about. You'll have real fun with them. That's all for now, folks. This is Roy Rogers saying to all of you from all of us, goodbye, good luck, and may the good Lord take a liking to you. See you next week. Happy trails to you. Until we meet again. The Roy Rogers Show can be heard again next week at the same time with Pat Brady, Dale Evans, and the king of the cowboys himself, Roy Rogers. An Art Rush production written and directed by Fran Van Hardisfelt and music by Milton Charles. Come and get it. Come and get it. For quick two-minute energy for work and play, how about Grape Nuts Flakes? How about them, how about them, how about those Grape Nuts Flakes? How about those Grape Nuts Flakes? How about them, how about them, how about those Grape Nuts Flakes? They are so good, good for you, too. The two-minute energy works for you, so how about them, how about them, how about Grape Nuts Flakes? Grape Nuts Flakes is one of the triple-wrapped post cereals. Guaranteed fresh or triple your money back. 
Look for Grape Knots Flakes, the great two-minute energy cereal in the package with Roy Rogers and Trigger on the front. Featured in our cast were Frank Hemingway, Ken Peters, Pat McGeehan, Jack Lloyd, and Nestor Paiva. This is Art Ballinger speaking for Post Sugar Crisp. Stay tuned for the latest news brought to you by Log Cabin Syrup.